here we are going to see that how the second order derivative can be used to make sense of the profit maximization condition of a firm. So, let us consider this situation in which we are given a revenue function of a firm which is in symbolic terms. Here it must be confirmed that we are not dealing with any numerical example, we are talking about the symbolic functions. So, if we are given the revenue function, it is based upon the value of Q, which is actually the output of the firm. And if we are also given the cost function, which is dependent upon Q, which is the output again, we have these two functions which are basically used to develop the profit function. Here you can see the profit function, the formula of it is written here, that is revenue minus cost function. So, after writing this, we know that we are either going to maximize or minimize, which is broadly speaking the process of optimization. And for that, we need to take the first order derivative, which will allow us to make the first order condition. The first order condition is that when we put the first order derivative equal to 0. So, once we do this, we will be able to develop the first order condition, which will allow us to get to a certain value, which is known as the critical value. So, the derivative is taken with respect to q, because q is the independent variable. So, pi was the function and the derivative of it is taken. So, we can write it either in this way or in this notation. So, on the right hand side, the functions they come with their derivative forms and there is a negative sign in the middle. So, using the difference rule, we have taken the derivative of the two functions. So, we are going to apply the first order condition, which requires us to put the first order derivative equal to 0. So, instead of writing pi bar q, which is the first order derivative, we are writing 0, whereas the right hand side remains the same. Now, I can shift this uh, c bar q to the other side, which will become positive, and here this will be the latest form of the given function. So, we know that this is revenue function and it is the derivative of it and the derivative is the slope or the derivative uh, or the marginal form or marginal version of the given function. So, this is the derivative of revenue function, we can call it marginal revenue function. This is the derivative of cost function, though we can call it marginal cost function. And this is more suitable because it makes economic sense. We know that this is the profit maximization condition of the firm. So, we have developed this. Now, uh, when they are equal, these two derivatives, there will be a certain value of q and that certain value of q is known as the critical value of q, because at this value, the profit of the firm will be maximized. So, this is a very important value, therefore, we call it a critical value of output in this case. Now, we are at some maximum or a minimum, but we are not sure if we are talking about a maximum or minimum. And you know it is very significant to know that we are at a maximum or a minimum, because this is the minimum and this is the maximum. And the first order derivative leads to either of these. And we definitely do not want to go at a minimum when it comes to profit. So, this is why we need to make sure that we are at a maximum 
and not at a minimum and below the second order derivative condition is written for both of these possibilities that is when there will be a maximum the second order derivative will be negative and in case of a minimum the second order derivative will be positive and you can visualize this that when there is a maximum the slope is initially positive then it becomes zero and finally it becomes negative so there is a decline and the second order derivative or the rate of change of slope is less than zero whereas if there is a minimum in this case the slope is negative initially then becomes zero and then it becomes positive so the slope is increasing as we are moving from left to right so the rate of change of slope is positive in this case so this is the sense of how we talk about the negativity of the second order derivative for maximum and positivity of the second order derivative for minimum they are counterintuitive because if we see a negative value of the second derivative it strikes our mind that it would be a minimum but it is not so it would be maximum and a positive value of second order derivative makes us think that we are talking about something positive or like maximum but it's not so it will be a minimum so we must not be carried away by these counterintuitive signs we should focus on the diagram of a maximum in order to be clear that why the slope is becoming less over various values of x and that's why it is less than zero and why the rate of change of uh, slope is positive in case of a minimum because it is turning from negative to positive so this is the mathematical side of the maximum and minimum and the use of the second order derivative in case of the process of optimization where we either maximize or minimize so coming back to the main objective which was to see that how the profit can be maximized uh, we are taking the second order derivative because we just learnt about the importance of the second order derivative that it can guide us about if we are going towards the maximum or a minimum so this is the second order derivative which is very easy to make sense of because the difference rule is applied again and we have taken the second order derivative instead of the first order derivative so after taking the second order derivative which only introduced the double bar uh, we are looking for a maximum and you know for a maximum the second order derivative is negative so we have done the same thing that the second order derivative is now considered to be negative which will lead us to a maximum so this situation is being applied here in, in case of a maximum in this case profit maximization shifting this c double bar q here will make it a positive value and we will be left with this expression and now we can make sense of this expression from the diagram in the economics um, this is the second order derivative so i can split these two derivatives and the first derivative can be written like this and the second derivative can be kept in the bar notation and here one derivative can be kept outside whereas the other derivative is still kept intact with the cost function so it remains the same thing but we have uh, separated the two derivatives and represented them in a different way now this derivative can be written as a slope while this remains the same this can be written as slope whereas this remains the same now this is also the marginal revenue the first order derivative of cost function will be marginal cost so now we have written it in such a way which is making more sense that slope of marginal revenue should be less than slope of the marginal cost function so we have developed the condition for maximization and here in the diagram we can see the same thing is happening that we have q at uh, x axis and price marginal cost marginal revenue on y axis and the standard way of plotting marginal revenue is there in case of a perfect competition 
and this is marginal cost which has a u-shaped diagram and here if I want to find the slope of marginal cost it will be the straight line which is actually the tangent so this tangent is going to give us the slope of marginal cost curve now you can compare the slopes of marginal revenue and marginal cost curve here so the slope of marginal cost curve is nearly equal to zero because it's a straight horizontal line whereas the slope of marginal cost curve slope of marginal revenue curve is zero and the slope of marginal cost curve is some positive value is greater than zero so it means that the slope of marginal cost curve is actually greater in case so in this case as compared to the slope of marginal revenue and now we are seeing that this condition is being fulfilled that the slope of marginal cost curve here is greater than the slope of the marginal revenue curve which is a horizontal line and a slope is in this case is uh, zero so this diagrammatical depiction that we have been seeing before is now being verified mathematically and here what we have done is to develop a condition by using calculus the second order derivative to see that this diagrammatical depiction that we have been seeing in microeconomics is actually developed with the help of this calculus the second order derivative and we can take the first order and the second order derivatives to verify this thing in a numerical way here we have done it in a symbolic way but in the next video we will do it in a numerical way thank you